In this video, we'll take our first real look at the Python API and how to use it to streamline our workflow. Now, one of the best ways to approach streamlining your workflow is to try to identify things that you tend to do over and over and over again. So if you have any kind of repetitious task, there's a good chance that you can speed it up by having the computer do the repetition for you. In the case of what we've been doing with our networks in this course so far, you know, one thing that you might have noticed is that we're often having to put down out nulls and then rename them and then color them blue. And we do that over and over and over again. And even though it only takes maybe five to 10 seconds to do it, we could reduce the amount of frustration and the amount of time required quite a bit by just having the computer do all of those steps for us right away. So let's make a little tool that does that for us. Essentially what our tool will do is we'll select a node and then we'll hit tab and type something like create out null. And then it will put down an out null for us underneath this node. And it'll color it the correct color. So how do we approach something like this using Python? Well, the first thing we need to do is to create a shelf tool because that's the way that we get our tools into the network editor. So if we go up to here to our Python class shelf and we right click and say new tool, go back to the options tab and let's just name it. Let's call it create out null. And for the label, we'll just call it create out null. And note that this label is what it's actually gonna show up in the network editor as. So it's good to make this something that makes sense. All right, so if we hit apply, you can see that it changes there. Let's just make it show up in the network editor right away. So if we go over to context, and then this tool is gonna to be creating a SOP. So the only place where it really makes sense for it to exist is the SOP context. All right, and then for tab, tab submenu path, let's just call that Python class and hit apply. So now if we put our cursor into the network editor, and I'm actually clicking to put the focus on Houdini, cursor in the network editor, hit tab, here's our Python class menu, here's create out null, which does nothing currently. All right, so let's create our script. So if we go over to the script tab, Make sure that script language is still set to Python. So the first thing that we need to know how to do in order to implement this tool is how to get a node instance. Now the simplest way to get a node instance in Houdini is with the node function. So if we type who dot, and remember that the who, H-O-U module, is where most but not all of the functions that we're going to be using to manipulate Houdini reside. So you can kind of think of the who module as your hub for controlling Houdini with Python. So if we type who dot, we can do who dot node n o d e, and then we just give it a path. So if we just say maybe slash obj slash explosions to get to this point, and then we'll just say particle controller to get this node. Particle controller. And what this function will do is it will return an, a Python instance that relates to this node. So essentially it'll be a Python object that allows us to control mostly everything about this node. So we can do things like set the name, set the color, uh, move it around in the network editor, set parameters on it, get its geometry, uh, all kinds of things. The list is actually very long for this. So since it returns an object, we actually need to drop it into a variable. So we could say something like who node equals. And that way our who node var variable here, in fact, to make this less confusing, let's just say node equals. That's what this is. So now that we have the node object. Let's see what we can do with it. Let's make it, let's actually just print its path. So if we say print node.path, make sure 
make sure that you get the open and close parentheses on there. So what this function will do is return the path of the current node. So if we hit apply, and we click in here, it brings up this little console here, and it just prints out the path. So hit clear and close. We can also do who.ui.display message node.path and hit apply. And then if we put our cursor into the network editor, hit tab and then type uh, create out null. There's our tool because we set it up in this context tab. And now it displays the path in our dialog. So this is great, but it only relates to this node. And what we actually want to do is have it use the currently selected node. So how do we get the current selection? Well, there is a function in the who module for that. So what we would do is we would hit enter here. And then we would say selected nodes equals who dot selected nodes. And there it is. Open and close parentheses. So the way that this function works is it just returns a list of all the currently selected nodes. And that list will be a list of node objects. So it's the same type of object as this. There'll just be a list of them for every single one that we have selected. So what we could do is say for node in selected node, uh, underscore nodes, print node.path. And let's just go ahead and delete this stuff at the bottom here. And hit apply. And then if we click on our little tool here, notice that nothing happens. And that's because we don't have anything selected right now, so it has nothing to print. So let's just select two nodes here and click our tool. And there it is, control matrix and particle controller. Hit clear and hit close. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to first collect all the selected nodes. Then we're going to use a for loop to loop over each selected node. And then we're just going to print that node's path. So that's all that's doing. All right, next we would like to actually create the out nulls. So how do we create nodes in Houdini? Well, there is a function on the node object called create node that allows us to create nodes. So the only way that creating nodes works in Houdini is you have to create a node as a child of another node. So essentially you have to get the parent of the node that you want to create and then call the create node on that, on that node. So in this case, what we want is slash obj slash explosions, because we'll need to create the node inside of that one. So how do we get that? Because we don't necessarily know where we are in this network. We could be in some other object, some other geometry object, and it could be called something other than explosions. So we can't just hard code that path. We need to actually know where we are. So there are a couple of different ways to get the parent. First thing I would like to show you is using node.node. .node. So right now we have node, and node is our object that's current in the loop. So this is a node object. Now there's another function on the node object called node. And what that does is it allows you to give a relative path to the current node. So node.node. .node. So what we could do is in quotes do dot dot, close parentheses, and that'll allow us to get the parent because it's a relative path to this node object. So if we hit apply and we click our tool right now, you can see that it says explosions. And note that this node function here is just returning yet another node object. 
So we could call that same path that we had before, dot path. We could call that same function, hit apply, hit our tool, and get slash obj slash explosions printed out. So it all kind of comes full circle. So the way that we can make this work is we can store that into a variable, say parent equals no dot no dot dot. And then underneath, we can say parent dot create node. And the way that create node works is the first thing that it wants is a type name. And the type name is going to be uh, the internal type name of an operator. So how do you find that out? Well, the quick rule of thumb is you just put down the node that you want to create. So in this case, it's a null. So we'll type null and put it down. And it'll be this part of the name that it creates by default most of the time. It doesn't actually have to be, but like 99% of the time it will be. So basically, you look at the part of it without the number that it attaches at the end. If you want to be really sure, or if that doesn't work, a surefire way to determine what the name of the type is is by right-clicking on the node, going to Type Properties, and it says it right here. This is what you want. All right, so if we hit Cancel, let's just go ahead and delete this null. Now we know that the type that we want is just null. So you can say create node null. And then it wants us to give it a default name. So in this case, it'll be capital letters out. And then close parentheses. So now let's hit apply. Let's just select our particle controller here. And hit create out null. And there's our new node. You might have to search around a bit to get this to uh, find your new out null. Basically, it's going to put it at the zero zero position of your network. Later, we'll look at how to actually position it so that it's right next to this object. But for now, that's where it's going to be. So if you don't see it, just look around a bit. Maybe press space H to home and look for nodes that look out of place, like this one. Having it as capital letters out, again, makes it pretty easy to see. So that could be helpful. Now notice what happens if we select particle controller and we hit apply, and then we hit our shelf tool again. It creates another null, and it just puts a one at the end, which is very handy. And there's actually an argument in create node that we can use to cause it to raise an exception when it tries to create a node that has the same name. But by default, it doesn't do that. And that's usually what you want. So let's just select both of these and hit delete to get rid of them. Now we should note that this create node function also returns a node object. If you're sensing a pattern here, that's because there is one. Most of the functions that deal with nodes in Houdini will actually return the new node object. So what we can do is we can actually dump this into another variable. So we could say out null equals parent node dot create node null out. And now our out null will contain a reference to our very new node. And we can use that to control the new node. So if we just hit apply. So now when we create our null, it's actually, well, for one thing, it's way down here in the wrong place. And for another thing, it's not wired into the node that we had selected. So we'll need to do that. Let's go ahead and wire it in first, and then we'll look at how to position it. So the way that you wire uh, create inputs for nodes is, if we just go down to the next line, the simplest way is to just say out null dot, and then we say set next input. And what set next input will do is it'll grab whatever the next input is that's not connected, and it'll connect it to whatever you tell it. And what it's expecting here is a node object. 
So what do we want to wire it into? Well, we want to wire it into whatever we had selected, which in this case is this node variable here. That's where that's stored. So we can just give it that directly, and it should hook itself into whatever we had selected. So let's go ahead and test that. If we hit apply, we select our particle controller. I'm just going to hit tab and go to Python class and say create out null. And you should see a null somewhere that's actually hooked into your particle controller. All right, so what if we want to actually get rid of this once it's connected? Say we want to have a tool where we select it and it destroys all the inputs. Well, the way that you would do that is you just say set next input, or rather you would say node dot set input. And then you give it the index of the input, so zero for the first one, for example. And then you just give it none with a capital M. And this is a special Python keyword that just basically means nothing. So what we should see here is it'll create the out null, and this time it, it will actually appear to hook it in, even though it hooks it in and then unhooks it. So if we hit apply, let's just test to make sure that works. Let's delete this out null. Go to our particle controller, hit create out null, and indeed it disconnected it afterwards because there's no, no wire going in there. Let's delete the out null. Let's go ahead and remove this line because we actually do want it to be wired in. So how do we actually put the out null underneath the node that we just created, or that we had selected rather? Well, we do that by setting its position. So let's say out null dot set position. And what set position expects is a list. So we can just do open and close square brackets and do close parenthesis now, because why not? And all it wants is two numbers in there. So I could give it zero, one, hit apply, select the particle controller and you notice it's up a little bit higher. That's a little bit hard to see, so let's just give it like five. Delete the out null. Select our particle controller again. And you can see it puts it up here instead. So basically the way that this works is these are two coordinates, x, x and y coordinates. x goes this way, so to the right, and y goes upwards. So if you gave it a negative number, it would go downwards from 0, 0. And if you gave it a neg negative one number in x, it would go left from 0, 0. So we don't want to actually give it absolute numbers like this, though. We want to have it position it directly underneath our particle controller. So if we select that and delete it again, how do we do that? Well, just, just as we can set the position of a node object, we can also read the position off of a node object. So what we could do is we could say out null dot set position node dot position. And this position function will just return a list with x, y coordinates. We can actually test this out by printing node.position and hitting apply. Let's go ahead and select our particle controller again and hit create out null. And you can see that it displays the position of the new out null. And you can even tell that it created the out null on top of the particle controller now if I move it down here. Clear and close, and delete the out null. So this is not quite what we want, because we'd rather have the out null being somewhere around here. So let's go ahead and delete it again. And go ahead and delete the print statement as well. So how do we do this? Well, we could give it a list like this, and say position 0, and then get the position 1, and then subtract a number. That's a bit cumbersome. So let's just leave this as putting it overlapping and use another function to move it. So node objects have, if we do out null dot, node objects have this function called move, 
which is similar to set position, but instead of taking absolute coordinates to place the node, it actually takes an offset. It'll be an X and Y offset, so it's still the same thing. You give it a list with two numbers. It's just that in this case, it's an offset where it moves it, and in this case, for set position, it sets it to those coordinates. So if we were to give this in square brackets 0, negative 1, make sure that you have square bracket and a parenthesis there. And then we hit apply and select our particle controller and hit create out null. Now it puts it down there. Okay, so now our particle controller has an out null attached to it. And this is almost what we want out of this tool. But something that would be kind of nice is after we put down this out null, it'd be kind of nice if it would select it. And we also still need to color it, which we'll look at in a second. So let's go ahead and delete the out null and take a look at how to select our new node. So it's pretty simple. We just go to the next line, type out null dot set selected true. So basically what this function does is it sets the selected value of the new node. So in this case if we say true it's going to tell it to be selected and if we said false it will tell it to deselect it. So in fact what we could do is go ahead and test this first. So if we hit apply let's select particle controller hit create out null and now it selects our out null. Notice that it leaves the particle controller selected. So what we'll probably want to do is deselect that. So if we add one more line here, we can say node. Remember this node variable contains a reference to the current node that we're looping over. So we can say node.setSelected false and hit apply. And let's just go ahead and delete this out null. Select our particle controller and hit create out node. And now it's selected nicely. Okay, so let's take a look at how to add color to our new null. So the way that we do that is we can use the set color function. So set color actually takes another another type of object. Houdini actually has a color object that you could create in Python. So let's go ahead and create our color first. And in fact, I'm going to go down two lines just to show that there's a bit of a logical break. Let's just make this window a little bit larger so you can see the whole script. So what we can do is we can say new color equals, and then to create the color object, we just do who dot color with a capital C. And then notice that it's asking for an RGB tuple. The reason why Houdini has a has its own color object is because it allows you to set things like like uh, hue saturation value and stuff on your color. However, to create your color originally, it's you can either just let it be black, which is the default here, or you can just uh, give it an RGB color. So if we want to give it an RGB color, remember it's a tuple, or it'll take a list too. So we can give it a list. Let's just make it blue. So 0, 0, 1. That'll make it blue. Close brackets. Close parentheses. Let's just print new color. And hit apply. So let's go ahead and delete our out null. Grab particle controller. Hit create out null. And here it's printing the color, who.color, RGB. Clear and close. Let's get rid of print new color and go ahead and set our out null to that color. So out null dot set color. And then we can just give it the color object. So new color. And close parentheses. And now if we hit apply, and let's go ahead and delete our out null. Grab our particle controller. And say create out null. Now it's blue automatically. 
But what if I don't like this pure blue color? What if I picked this color in the color picker and I really like this color? Or maybe I have a whole bunch of out nulls that are already this color, like I do in this scene file. And I just want to make sure that all of my new out nulls use the same color. Well, the easiest way to do this is to very quickly read the color off of this node. Now we could use it with set selected here, or with our who.selected nodes here, and just grab the color off the selected node. But an even easier way to do that is just to grab this node, drag it actually first. Let's create space for it. So I'm going to hit enter a couple times up here. All right, now we grab this node, we drag it over here. And notice that it gives us the appropriate who.node function with the path in there. This is great for testing things, but not so great for permanent scripts because you'll have a hard-coded path in there, so it'll only ever work on that node. So we could just drop that into a variable, say n. I'm using a single letter variable in here, here in this case because I'm just going to delete this code later. And now we can say print n.color, open close parentheses. And what n.color will do, this again is a node object, so the color function of the node object will just return an instance of this color class here. So in this case, it'll be uh, a who.color that, cor that corresponds to the color of this null. So if we hit apply, I'll even deselect this so that you can tell that it's working. You can say create out null. And there's our color. It's 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.6. So we can just say this is already 0, 0 0.2 for green, and 0 0.6 for blue. And hit apply. Let's go ahead and clear this one and then close it. And then we can just delete our test code here. I'm just going to bring that back up. All right, so if we hit apply now, let's go ahead and delete our out null. Select our particle controller. We can click create out null. And now it's the same color as this one. OK, so the last thing that we could add to our out null tool is when we put it down, we could have it actually display the last one. So if we select that guy and delete it, how would we do that? Well, there are functions on our node object, as you might have guessed. So the simple way that we could go about this is we could do, we could set the display flags inside this for loop. And that would actually do what we want because it would display each null as it's created. But the problem with that is it'll actually have to cook the geometry for each null. So if we selected both of these and this control matrix came up first in the selection, it would create the null here and then display it and then cook everything above control matrix. And then since particle controller comes up second, it would create the out null and then it would put, set the display flags and then it would cook everything that the particle controller needs. So it would almost do what we want because the display flag would still end up on the last null that it created. But the bad thing about that is that it might have to cook a bunch of things that it doesn't actually need to. So instead of putting it inside the loop, we can just put it at the end. So how do we get access to the last node in the loop? Well, this node variable and this out null variable will still be set from their values in the loop. So if we just use out null outside the loop at the end, it'll still be set to whatever the last one that it hit was. So if outside the loop we just say out underscore null dot set display flag true, it'll actually run the function on the last null that it creates. So this function works very similarly to the setSelected function in that you give it a value and then 
it'll set the flag based on that. So in this case, it'll set the display flag to on because we gave it true. If we gave it false, it would turn off the display flag and put it on some other node in our network. So if we hit apply, select our protocol controller, hit create out null, now it's displayed. And notice that the render flag stayed over here on fireworks protocols. And that's because Houdini in Python, it, di it differentiates between the two. So if you set the display flag, it doesn't set the render flag as well, which is usually what we want, because usually we want to handle them independently when we're uh, scripting. So what we can do is we can go down and say out all dot set render flag true and hit apply. So now if we delete this out null again, we select protocol controller, we say create out null. Now both flags move up to the out null. So let's just check to make sure that it works for creating multiple out nulls. So if we delete this one, select the control matrix, select the control point, select the protocol controller, hit tab and say create out null. It creates all of them, all of them are selected, and it displays only the last one. Notice that we selected this one last, so that's the one that is actually displayed.